You won't kill me, Air Marshal 50 Cent. You will only die trying. But I will kill you. Or I'm a, uh, or, or I'm a dead train. When it comes to the games I review for this channel, I always like to walk into them with an open mind. I don't really like being overly negative in a review and try to find something enjoyable about what I play. Unfortunately, I really can't do that in this case, because 50 Cent Bulletproof straight up sucks ass. I hate to be so blunt about it, but there is legit nothing remotely good about this game outside the music. And even then, that's subjective since it comes down to whether or not you like 50 Cent's music. Honestly, I probably should have expected as much considering it's a low Metacritic score from both critics and fans, but I was hoping it would be one of those bad but still kind of fun games, but I can't even call it that. Well, let's go ahead and rip the band-aid off this one. You ever have one of those days that start out normal and end up with bullets flying? Well, you're about to. It's some crazy ass shit, but that's the hood. A hard place to live, and an easy place to die. You play as Curtis Jackson, aka 50 Cent, who is chilling at his crib when he gets an urgent phone call from his friend k Dog. He needs 50's help, and after assembling the members of G-Unit, Lloyd Banks, Young Buck, and Tony Ayo, the crew will head to Queens to look for him. They arrive in time to see a mysterious group of masked men kidnapping k Dog before both groups open fire on each other. After fighting through the area, k Dog is nowhere to be seen, and a mysterious man ambushes 50 Cent, who, you guessed it, shoots him nine times. After G-Unit gets him back to a doctor and patched up, it's up to 50 to unravel the conspiracy regarding K-Dog, the mysterious group of masked men, and find out who shot him. This will take 50 all across New York, from fighting bikers in a junkyard. Never seen a dead dude walking before. Calm down, son. Now who the fuck are you? To gangbangers in the sewers, for some reason. all the while occasionally teaming up with the members of G-Unit, a corrupt cop played by Eminem. Ever see those skateboards? The new fiberglass ones with the chrome wheels? My kid loves those things. Fucking expensive though, especially on a cop salary. Here we go. And a weapons dealer played by Dr. Dre. <laughs> Shit, well for that you're talking to the right nigga. The story is there, I guess? I wouldn't call it good or even remotely interesting as I was mentally checked out about halfway through my playtime. Usually I can ignore a bad story if the gameplay makes up for it, but that's not really the case here. The game is primarily a third person shooter, bizarrely with some mild platforming elements. Off the bat, 50 controls weird. I think it's mainly because of how slow his walk cycle feels, like he looks and feels like he's running underwater. You can't lock onto an enemy while shooting. Instead, it's done manually, with the aiming reticle turning red and shrinking in size as it hovers over an enemy. This will make your shots more accurate, do more damage, and if you line it up properly, can nail a nasty headshot. And I really, really hate this shooting. Like, I don't mind the manual aim. In fact, Saints Row's manual aiming worked perfectly fine. Here though, it's so damn awkward. It just feels very stiff, so it could take forever to line up a shot on an enemy. This wouldn't be so bad, but enemies are constantly moving around once you engage them, so your accuracy is really going to suffer. The game tries to compensate for this with its cover system, but it doesn't help that much. You could take cover behind walls or crouch behind objects in order to protect yourself and give yourself time to aim, but cover can be busted at times. It doesn't always work immediately, so you may end up running into a wall for a few seconds 
mashing cover until 50 Cent decides to snap onto it. Or you can just end up reloading your gun instead since they share the same button for some reason. Then when you do decide to fire from behind the wall, there's a chance you'll just abandon cover completely and have to do it again. This isn't going into the fact that enemies will either take cover themselves or just straight up bum rush you while you try to hide. You do have a counter ability that lets you one shot enemies in melee range. With unique moves like gutting them with a knife or snapping their necks, but it runs on a stamina meter you have to wait to recharge, and it makes you a sitting duck if you use it while surrounded. You can also take enemies hostage to use as a meat shield against bullets, they can only hold on to them for a little bit before they break free. Shooting just doesn't feel good in this game, especially as the guns you're using feel really underpowered. Outside of their rate of fire, they don't shoot all that differently from each other. A good example is the sawn off shotgun. When enemies are using it, they tend to do some decent damage and can kill you fast if you're not careful. But once it's in your hands, it's insanely inaccurate and barely does any damage unless you're right up close and shoot near the head. You'll unlock better weapons you can buy as the game goes on, but even with the game listing off their stats, they don't really feel more powerful. Made worse as later enemies in the game are serious bullet sponges, soaking up full clips from your stronger guns before they go down. So any better damage you should be doing is basically mute. Exasperating this whole shooting problem is how insanely aggressive the enemies you fight are. As soon as you engage them, they pretty much never stop shooting, don't have to reload, and might as well be using hitscan with how accurate their shots are. Like I said before, they're constantly moving, so they won't sit still and just let you kill them, and won't waste an opportunity to get in close either. All that could be manageable if not for the game's camera and its level design. This game's field of view is tiny, with the camera way too close to 50 cent. This means you're not going to be able to see every enemy near you. So, more times than not, you'll end up getting killed by a guy who's just out of sight, or just as likely by someone who snuck up behind you. Levels tend to be these wide open areas, usually with a couple different paths you can take in order to move on to the next objective. While they aren't super huge and technically still linear corridors, they can be confusing to navigate at times, as there are plenty of dead ends and doors you can't open, forcing you to backtrack to find the right way, made more difficult as you don't get a map for these areas or a marker or something pointing you in the right direction. This design makes it easy for enemies to sneak up behind you or ambush you as soon as you go through a door. And to add on to all that, every level sends dozens of enemies at you all at once. At certain parts, it can almost feel like they're infinitely spawning. It takes so long to kill them. In all the games I've played for this channel, I don't think I've ever had as many cheap deaths as I've had in Bulletproof. And I was playing on the normal difficulty. There are a few ways to make it more bearable, for example, you can buy pain meds before a level to heal up on the fly. You can even increase your maximum health by buying vitamin water for some reason. I know it's probably because 50 Cent was sponsored by them, but for a game where you play as a rapper fighting gang members and drug dealers, you'd think you'd increase your health with Crystal or Hennessy or just something more gangster than vitamin water. The only drawback to the healing items is outside of one instance, they don't spawn in level. So if you didn't bring any with you or run out, you're shit out of luck. In that case, you have to rely on bulletproof vests that will spawn around the level, coming in three different tiers of defense. You can also buy armor from Dr. Dre before a level, along with new guns and topping off your ammo. Though in later levels, you might as well not even be wearing armor, as it will be shot to pieces almost instantly. The only saving grace about combat is that occasionally you'll have someone team up with you, either other members of G-Unit, Eminem or Dr. Dre. Your AI partners have infinite health, ammo, and can usually keep aggro off you. While they won't kill an entire room for you, they'll at least give you a moment to heal up or keep yourself from getting ganged up on. Sometimes they're used in puzzles, and I use the word puzzles really generous here, as it really just amounts to having a member of G-Unit, usually Lloyd Banks for some reason, pick a lock or plant a bomb where you fight off enemies. Though they have a habit of getting stuck fighting enemies instead of listening to 50 and occasionally getting stuck on objects. Circling back to the levels, they're kind of bland and uninspired. Basically looking like a checklist from what you'd expect from a gang themed third person shooter. Alleyway, check. Subway, check. Sewer level, check. They feel like they go on forever at points. 
as sometimes you'll need to find a key card or switch in order to open a path to the next objective. Which I mentioned before, you don't get a map to use to help you figure out where you are or wherever the switch is. You get blueprints during the sewer level, but it's worthless since it doesn't tell you where you are in that area. There are some platforming moments. They're not exactly Mario 64. Really, it's just looking for a way to climb up to another floor or moving containers around to create a path. It's not really fun or intuitive, to be honest. Like, there's this one part in the projects where you need to cross to another building, but the only path ahead is stuck. So you'd think you'd have to shoot it down, but when that doesn't work, you might think it's the wrong way. Nope. Turns out you have to shoot down the AC unit holding it up. This is the one and only time you ever have to do something like that. All right. Back to sleep. Just close your eyes. And think of pussy. Truth is, there isn't much else I could do. And the happiest thought I could think was finding the motherfucker who bent me up. This is around the part I'd get into the story, but honestly, I really don't want to. It's just so boring. K Dog turns out to have been working with the feds to take down the mask guys you see at the beginning. But then he gets killed, so the rest of the game is just trying to find those guys, avenge him, and find out who shot 50 Cent nine times. 50 gets framed for killing the feds and K-Dog. He has to take on a biker gang, the triad, the Italian mob, Latino gangbangers. Then he finds the guy who shot him, and it turns out to be this generic-ass looking military dude. Freeze! Let her go! You were warned to stay away! Stay away? You're gonna answer for K-Dog. Then you're gonna answer for me. Eminem betrays him and arrests him. What the fuck are you doing? Sorry, pal, but you're under arrest. Under arrest? For what? Shit, I don't know. Pick something. But he's freed from jail almost immediately, so who cares? Then the two are square again by the end of the game. Ah! How you feeling? I've been shot. What do you think? I think I got a pretty good idea how that feels. It was just business, 50. Nothing personal. You take care of yourself, McVigor. What's this for? I don't know. Spend it on your kid. I'm skipping a lot, but trust me, you don't need to know and won't care at all. The story is just really incoherent and can't decide if the player should take it seriously or not. It's not overly gritty or serious or tongue-in-cheek. It's this boring in-between like a bargain bin DVD movie. Making it worse is the awful voice acting. It was just another night when I got an urgent page from K-Dog, a major crack hustle I knew since Juvie. 50 Cent has zero emotion and sounds like he's reading the script with his finger. It's just so phoned in. For someone who claimed he declined being CJ in San Andreas so he could star in his own game, you'd think he'd sound more excited about it. By the way, Rockstar confirmed he was full of shit and they never approached him to be in GTA. Eminem is a little better, but not by much. How the fuck did you get in here? Is that any way to welcome a guest? What you want, McVicker? Well, I figured you might want to know that the guy fitting your description is the main suspect in the safe house murders. His jokes don't land well since they're usually bouncing off 50, and both of their lines will abruptly cut off the others, so it just sounds like a long run-on sentence at times. The only one with good voice acting is Phil Lamar as Bugs, the disabled pawn shop owner. Though that's to be expected considering he's a veteran voice actor. Well, uh, let's see here. Story sucks. Characters suck. Gameplay sucks. Is there anything left? Uh, well, there's a small little hub you can wander around in between missions. This is where you can stock up on weapons, painkillers, or learn new counter kills. Or you can go to 50's crib and watch trailers for his, at the time, upcoming movie, Die Trying. Or watch vitamin water commercials. You can also buy bootleg songs to listen to in-game and some of them are original tracks and freestyles recorded specifically for the game. So that's neat. Uh, what else we got here? There's an arcade mode, where you can run through the same levels as before to try and rack up a high score. Play as 50 Cent, Inked 50 Cent, members of G-Unit, or this guy, the Ice Berm. Zero clue who he is. I'm assuming it's a reference to someone these guys know. Well, I guess I should wrap this up. Look, I wasn't expecting this game to be this underrated hidden gem. I knew it was bad before I started playing, but I was hoping to get something out of it. Maybe some fun kills or some unintentional laughs, but nothing. This game was short. 
Only took me about 6 hours to beat, but Christ, it feels like such a slog compared to much longer games I've played. It's just a boring, bland, by the numbers, bargain bin third person shooter. Its only novelty is that you play as 50 Cent and hang out with G Unit. And it somehow manages to squander that, considering the other members are just glorified NPCs with a couple lines each. But apparently it sold well, or well enough to justify a sequel, Blood on the Sand, which actually looks like a decent game. It definitely reviews a lot better than this pile of garbage. Kinda regret not playing that instead, but I'm sure I'll get around to it in the future. In conclusion, fuck this game, just play San Andreas while listening to G-Unit instead. And that's the video. Thanks for watching. Man, it's been years since I've made a video this short. I'll be honest, part of me was thinking maybe I could just be more thorough and picking it apart, but there's just no substance to this game. And I feel like it would have gotten repetitive, and I don't want this game to waste your time like it did mine. So, enjoy this much shorter video instead. The next game is an old favorite of mine, and one I previously brought up on the channel. So I think you guys will enjoy it a lot. Not spoiling it yet, but it's another PS2 open world crime game. Trying to map out what games I want to cover and in what order. I just don't want to spoil it ahead of time in case my plans change. As I've said before, Saints Row 2 is on the docket. After thinking it over, I think I will play Chinatown Wars. And enough of you showed an interest where I think I'll take a crack at Hitman. That one is going to be a little tougher for me as I have to rethink my usual video approach to it, but it should be fun. Most likely it'll be on Blood Money. And I've got plenty of other stuff I want to play and explore for the channel. And may even do an RPG again soon. Especially since I constantly bring up the fact that I'm a fan, yet I've only ever covered three RPGs on the channel. And they're all Mario ones. So, if you're an RPG fan, let me know if there's any series or games that you want me to cover. Personally, I'd love to do something on Final Fantasy X, Tactics Advanced, or Tales of Fantasia. So again, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like and comment down below. Did you play 50 Cent Bulletproof? Do you think it's as bad as I do? Is Blood on the Sand really that much better? Let me know. And if you're new to the channel, I'd appreciate it if you subscribed. Check out the recommended video or playlist for games that are leagues better than what I just played. I'm Fuzzy Slippers, and I'll see you later. Peace.